Welcome to the session on managing hybrid container workloads at scale with ECS Anywhere. My name is Mesh Seidel Casing, and I'm a developer advocate with the container services team. Um, I kind of dabble a bit in everything containers. I work very, very closely with the product managers and the engineering teams in order to bring your feedback, which you have for us, back into the teams as much as possible and prioritize that feedback based on your needs at the moment. So today what we're going to be talking about is ECS Anywhere. But before we start, I'd like to kind of start with a small story. When I was small, I loved to take things apart and put them back together. My mother always didn't really like that very much, but most of the time it kind of worked. And I was always interested in how things work and when always things, even more so, how things break when they don't really work properly. And this is what kind of brought me to dive into this concept of using ECS Anywhere at scale. I have the opportunity to do these kind of things as part of my work. We're going to be talking about how things work above and beyond, I would say, the regular documentation of how to do things once and where things might actually break when you start to do those things. So let's have a look at our agenda for today. We're going to go over slightly to level the playing field of what ECS Anywhere is, how it works. We'll dive into a couple of the use cases and customer stories of how our customers are actually using ECS Anywhere in the field. And the last part is we're going to be diving into the considerations that you might need to think about when you start deploying ECS Anywhere at scale itself. I don't think I really need to go into the details of why containers. It's pretty obvious today. They're a universal um, unit of deployment. It allows you to accelerate your development cycle, your delivery to your customers, bring benefits to your end customers and users. The, the, the benefits are there and very, very obvious. I'm going to leave them here on the screen. With ECS Anywhere, we're talking about the fact that we understand as well in AWS that on-premises computing is not going away. So we need to provide a solution for our customers in order to manage their workloads, their container workloads in the same way. And with ECS Anywhere, it allows you to deploy pretty much everywhere. We'll see that in one second, what we're talking about in here. So ECS, in the cloud on the left-hand side, you have your ECS cluster in your region where you can deploy your tasks and your containers on different kinds of platforms for computing, be it on EC2, either on on-demand resources or spot resources. Or the same thing with Fargate, which is a serverless, serverless compute engine, which allows you to deploy those containers without having to worry about the underlying infrastructure. When we're talking about not in the cloud, where a couple of our customers or a number of our customers actually use this, we're talking about the option of deploying ECS or the container workloads on ECS anywhere, which we're going to be talking about today. There's also an option of using Outposts, which is a rack or a single one or two U server where you can use and get a AWS region experience or availability zone experience, I would say better, in your data center, on your premises, which allows you to interact with the same APIs as you're doing today with your work in the cloud itself. So let's see how ECS Anywhere actually works. On the left-hand side, we have the region, which is the ECS control plane, and we have an AWS Systems Manager service, which are two of the main components of the services which we need in order to run ECS Anywhere. On the right-hand side, we have a server or a virtual machine, which is running on the customer data center or premises, where we install a Systems Manager agent, which connects to the Systems Manager service in the cloud. It registers the instance which it is running upon, and the ECS agent there continues to register itself into the ECS cluster to allow your workloads to run. This is the high level view, but we're gonna go down slightly deeper into the, into the weeds and see exactly how this actually works. So on the left-hand side, we have almost the same services. We have the systems manager and we have the ECS, but we also have IAM, identity and access management. We have Amazon CloudWatch, and we also have S3, which is gonna be there for the purposes of explaining how your containers can actually use a service with inside the cloud. The customer installs an operating system based on the list of supported operating systems which we have provided in our documentation, which is available online. With that, they install the ECS Anywhere agent through an installation script. That script installs an SSM agent on the machine and with credentials which you provide as a parameter to the script, 
This sends an activation key to Systems Manager in the cloud. And as part of that activation, it, re it receives instance roles and credentials to in order for you to run and prov provision further things on the operating system itself. Those credentials are provided to the ECS agent, which is installed on the physical machine. And ECS agent registers itself into the cluster with inside the region. And once that's done, it starts listening for requests or commands coming from the API within the region to understand when it should start launching containers or tasks. The Docker runtime, of course, is running on the physical machine. And based on the information coming from the control pane, it will launch one or more containers. It also can provide credentials to one of one or all of these tasks running on your physical machine in order for you to, for example, for one of those containers to upload a file into S3. All these credentials are rotated on a regular basis. There's nothing which is hard coded into any of these machines. This is secure and allows you to streamline your operations in a way which you don't have to manage all these things by yourself. And this can scale. This can scale to thousands of sites and thousands of instances in each site. As part of my work, which I did, I tried to see how much actually this can scale. So I ran a small experiment and I spun up a thousand instances in one of my regions because in AWS, we don't really provision physical hardware. So I used this as a, a demonstration to provision EC2 instances to register them as external instances into my cluster. And it can register a thousand instances. This of course can scale even further, but just for the purposes of this, of this example or the demonstration, this is what we're getting to, thousand instances. And I can also run a thousand tasks on those thousand instances. You can see the simplicity here of the same APIs, the same work way that you work running with inside the cloud. You can manage these workloads also on premises in your data centers without having to really change pretty much anything. You have a supported operating system, you install the agent, you register it, and this allows you to run one or more workloads on those physical systems. Our customers are using ECS anywhere for a number of different use cases, be it mostly because of the fact that they can't run their workload in the cloud for a number of reasons, be it on a factory floor, in a physical hospital, in a laboratory, on a ship, at a store running a cash register, all these kind of things are these use cases which our customers have come to us and asked us, we would like to run our containers the same way that we do in the cloud with other systems with the same CI, CD, the same pipelines, the same tooling, and also run it on all of these use cases as well. And this is what ECS Anywhere allows you to do or enables you to do. I'd like to give you three examples of customers which are using ECS Anywhere today. 3DI is a pure cloud video software as a service solution. Amazon ECS Anywhere drastically cut their involvement in everyday monitoring and management of on-premises installations, allowing them to free up resources to move on to the next thing which was providing the value to the customers. They reallocated 30% of its staff, not reducing 30%, but reallocated 30% of their staff to work on things which are more important to the business by using ECS Anywhere. Second customer is Tempus X that manages live video games and events for the sports league and broadcasting services like in American professional football. And they save time using ECS Anywhere by allowing them to, to process the data and information directly at the site where the event was happening without having to upload on the cloud and perform that information inducing latency and extra work. They ran the same way as they do currently with the same containers on their local machines or in the cloud. And this allowed them to move a lot lost faster as well. The last one I want to mention is the just walk out technology. If you've ever been to an Amazon store where you can walk into the store, pull something off the shelf, scan your Amazon ID or even your handprint today as well. That kind of technology is also running or enabled by ECS Anywhere by running the, the applications with inside the store, again, using the same methodology of development, testing, and operations that they currently use for their applications today in the cloud. So let's go and start talking a tiny bit about considerations at scale. 
The first one I would like to talk about is deployment. A lot of our customers come to ask us, what do you suggest we use to deploy ECS anywhere on our on-premises instances and machines and, and servers? And the answer to that question is, it doesn't really make a difference to us as AWS. What we suggest is that you use the most comfortable and appropriate tool that you're currently using today. It could be Ansible, it could be Chef, it could be Puppet, it could be a number of other different technologies used today within the industry. As you can see, the documentation is available publicly. You can find out exactly how to install, but essentially it is only an installation script. We don't really care which tool you use to provision those scripts and its software into the instances that you would like to install ECS anywhere. It's essentially, in this case, it's a simple bash script, which has a couple of parameters which you need to provide as part of the installation when you run the script. Some of them are uh, required parameters, some of them are optional parameters, and it's, it looks pretty much like this, running a bash script, which you provide a region where you're registering your ECS Anywhere instance, the name of the cluster you're registering to, and two parameters which are mandatory, which is an activation ID and an activation code. And that activation ID and code is, if you remember, the initial credentials needed in order to register to Systems Manager in order for you to cr retrieve credentials from the cloud and continue installing the rest of the operations and allowing your machine to interact with ECS itself. So let's talk a tiny bit about authentication. Um, as part of that script, there was a step which said to run an SSM activation. And that is actually what this JSON file contains. It's two strings or two secrets. And this is all great as part of the installation process. And the documentation tells you how to do this once. But what happens when you need to install more than one machine? You need to install 10, 20, 100, 1,000. The method of installing and running that script 1,000 times to create activation codes 1,000 times is not really scalable. But don't worry, we have, as part of the, the, the documentation and part of the steps you can create your activation, you can reuse the same key a number of times, up to a limit of a thousand times for the same key. So if, for example, you need to deploy a thousand instances or a thousand servers, you can use the same activation key and run the script the same way. And which kind of leads me to the next problem. What happens when you want to do this? And we all know that projects which start on-prem are not as fast as things which we can do in the cloud. So they take time. So by default, when you create this activation key, it is valid for one hour. And I don't think we would, I don't know anybody, specifically not myself, that would be able to install a thousand servers or run the script over a thousand servers on an easy way on-premises or a number of regions or number of locations. But don't worry, as part of the activation, you can also define a default or a later date where this expiration of this key will become no longer valid. So that allows you some leeway. In this case, I did it when, um, say, for example, we already passed this date, but this was just the example. You can provide a date in the future up to a month in advance where you can use the same activation key. So that kind of solves the problem of deploying it to a lot of instances over length of time. Before I was a developer advocate, I was a solutions architect for a number of financial customers here in Israel. And I don't know about you, but a lot of my customers at the time were very, very, very conscious of security. And I'm very happy about that as well. But a lot of things of they're very weary of sharing credentials in more than one location. And essentially, as we saw before, that activation key which we provide to the installation script is a credential. It can do things on your behalf inside the cloud. Yes, you're limited about what you can actually do, but it still gives you some kind of leg into the cloud or perhaps a, a, an attack vector that customers might be afraid of. And they came to us and said, we can't share the same authentication key and activation code across, across multiple instances, we need something different. So this is the solution which we came up as a proof of concept for the customer, but they can actually do this without having to provide 
the same credential to every single one of the instances. And how would this actually work? So on the left-hand side, we have the virtual machine of the server, which would make a call to an API gateway, making a request, in this case, get credential. In the back end of the API gateway, we would have a Lambda function, which would make that call on your behalf to Systems Manager, the same SSM create activation that we just had. It would make a call on your behalf. It would be for one activation and default to one hour. It SSM would provide that specific JSON blob or that key. And API gateway, we provide it back to that physical server. What are the soul for the customer? Well. It provided them a way to allocate to each and every single virtual machine or server which they were installing a unique code or secret that wouldn't be shared amongst the others. And in that case, reduce their attack vector or the security vulnerability that they were afraid of. The activation code is a one-time code only, and it was only valid for a certain amount of time. You might be able to say, okay, but now I have to provide another security credential to get into the API gateway. Yes, you can, of course, provide as part of that request to provide authentication. The solution provided here to the customer allowed them to gain the trust in the methodology, allowing them to separate the duties between the actual authentication to request the API and the code which was received afterwards in order allowing them to activate their actual instance into the cluster. Sufficient passive security review and allowed them to scale this methodology because it can scale to immense amounts of numbers without having any problems. The API gateway and, Aiden and Lambda can handle this without any issues. The two other things I would like to mention today, and I don't actually have a slide for them, but I do will talk about them, is the fact of, for the scaling, um, is the fact of monitoring and logging. ECS Anywhere allows you to configure um, a log agent or a log forwarding agent on the actual task which will allow you to forward your logs, your application logs. And we're talking about the application logs themselves, not the server logs or the ECS agent log. This allows you to forward the instance, the logs into CloudWatch, the same as you would do for any ECS or Fargate task running in the cloud. It's exactly the same methodology. As long as you log the correct information, that information will be available for you in CloudWatch. And you can search on that information, alert on that information, and perform any kind of action or um, method you would like to invoke based on the information coming out of those logs as well. The last one I would like to go um, to the last one I would like to mention is the fact of tagging, and this is mostly for the operational aspect. We have a very detailed white paper on how you should um, tagging methodologies for operational in, uh, excellence with inside your your organization. The same goes for ECS and ECS anywhere. Tag everything, tag your tasks, tag your container instances, tag whatever you can. This will help you not only for authentication and allowing um, authorization for who is allowed to perform a certain task. It will allow you to manage your cost and allocate specific tags to cost centers in the future. And the last one as well, of course, is allow you to do filtering on specific instances. I do want to say that this functionality is currently not available today within ECS or ECS Anywhere. It will be coming soon. So this is kind of a preview to future-proof your work in order for you to enable yourself and set yourself up for success in the future. But still, tag whatever you can. Use those tags in a, in a, in a sensible way to allow you to identify all your resources as easily as possible. I would like to leave you with two different um, links, which are very, very simple. The first one is a link to our landing page on ECS Anywhere. You can find any more information if you like about the service. And the second one is our roadmap, which is publicly available on GitHub. Please raise an issue if you would like to see some kind of functionality added into our products, which is not currently there. You can also see the, pros, the progress we're making on our actual um, items based on this roadmap. And before I end, I want to thank you for your time. This is my email, and I'm available on Twitter, so please feel free to send me a message. Um, DMs are open. If you have any questions about any of the products or any of the content I spoke about today, I would love to hear uh, and also hear your feedback about how you found the session. Thank you very much, and have a great day.